Hey guys, welcome to my newest build. This is my UC Fab PRT HD chassis. This is going to be used for U4RC 2.2 trophy class. Now, I'm just getting into this U4RC scene, really excited to do it, and wanted to jump right in and get into the trophy classes. Now, the trophy classes have a set of rules that really states that a lot of the chassis has to be a home built or a custom built not necessarily you don't have to build it yourself obviously but you do have to use something other than a stock chassis there is chassis classes for basically all the other cars that you can run but this one is the class that i was most interested in because the cars are custom and that is really what i like about this hobby the most now, as I said, this is the HD version of the PRT. PRT stands for Pure Race Truck, HD, heavy duty. Now, what the heavy duty means is that this is made from solid rod rather than chromoly tubing like he uses on many of his other chassis. Now, on his other chassis, he brazes everything. On this one, it's mainly MIG welded and cleaned up. The brazing is done on the light bar that I had added up there, uh, but other than that, everything is MIGged. However, everything is still extremely clean. Lots of cleanup on this thing to make everything look great. The HD version does have less bracing being that it is solid rod, um, but everything on this thing looks like it should hold up really well. Now this truck is set up to use the Vanquish one piece rear Yeti trailing arms in the rear. However, in the front right now you have to use the UC fab trailing arms that are shortened. Uh, the Yeti trailing arms will not work. It would push the truck too long and the twin hammers version that we make would be too short. So for right now, the UC fabs is what you'll find up front in this truck. Now I'm still deciding on exactly what I'm going to run for all of my different components. My transmission, I've got a pretty good hold on. I think I'll have my full parts list done for that pretty early and I'll get into that when we do. As far as axles go though, now I've gone back and forth on what I want to use for axles. Do I want to use the Vanquish V2 axles? They are basically an aluminum upgraded version of the stock AR60 axle, but there is some benefits to them with the ease of maintenance as far as being able to pull off the rear lockouts, pull out those shafts, where if I went with the F9 version, which is what I'm thinking, uh, the style is much better with the F9, very cool looking axle. However, it is a little bit more tedious to get to uh, those rear shafts and things like that, unless you have a proper pair of snapping pliers, which I do have, which does shorten up that time. So uh, I'm going back and forth on exactly which way I would go. Now I'm going with one of those two axles because I want the larger pinion bearing that we've integrated on both the V2 and the F9. That larger pinion bearing is not integrated into the Curry Rock Jock that we've been uh, running for so long. The Rock Jock, great axle, but I want that bigger pinion bearing. With big power, you can definitely see pinion bearing failures. We've seen that a lot in the past. So that's why we've upgraded that size on a lot of our newer axles. I also have a ton of other decisions to make. What motor and ESC? I think that I'm going to run a Tekken RX-8 Gen 2 because I've got one here. As far as the motor goes though, I'm not sure. I might run a Holmes Polar Pro motor. Uh, I've had really good luck with those in the past, so that may find its way in there. As far as wheels and tires go, that is a little bit up in the air, but not completely. Now this right here is not the setup that I'm gonna run. This is a Axial Trepidor. Not going to be my choice of tire for U4 racing, but inside of it is our method racing wheels in the brand new 1.2 inch width. These wheels are a full 0.4 inches wider than our previous wheels, and I'm definitely gonna run that setup on this truck. As far as the color combo and all that, yet to 100% decide on there. Pretty good chance it's gonna have some orange though if you were all to guess. One of the other cool things about the whole U4RC thing is that they do have rules to try and keep some scale realism in there as much as they can with RC cars. Some of those rules are that you have to completely hide as much of the electronics as you can as far as battery, motor, ESC, all of that. I like that. I like that they make you go through the effort to try and keep the truck looking good. You also have to run an interior in there of some sort. I'm going to run a spawn interior cut down to width so that it fits in this truck properly. Now the spawn interior is kind of that 2D half interior, but it's almost like a three quarter. It's got quite a bit of depth to it. I think it'll look pretty good in this truck. Nice amount of depth, 
the fit should be good. The size of the figure that's molded in is also appropriate. I think that'll be a great fit in here. Now I touched a little bit on the light bar earlier. Now I had two additions made to this chassis when I ordered it up. One was a cowl induction style hood, basically just a center section that raises up, starting at the front and then coming up towards the window, if you're all familiar with a cowl induction style hood from muscle car type thing. Just a little bit of detail that I wanted added there for just a little bit of breakup to that large hood area. And then the other addition was that light bar setup up here. He actually did braze this in, and one of the really cool details I'd like to show you guys a close up of is how he mounts that light bar. Now I've got a three inch Vanquish light bar up front, which is what this chassis is designed for. The cool thing about it is how he recesses the tube into the main tube to mount that light bar as clean as possible. Now, something that is very common in U4RC in this class especially is front and rear sway bars. Uh, this does have a trailing arm and leading arm suspension, so running a sway bar on both ends is fairly important. I'll be running the Vanquish Curry Rock Jock setup front and rear uh, and modified to width to work perfectly with this chassis. So that's a quick introduction to this build. You'll see a lot more on it. I will try and get it done fairly soon, but I'm not exactly going to rush through it. I'm excited to get the build done, um, but I'm really excited to kind of get through and do all the little steps and uh, get this thing looking really good once at least before I run it. If you want to get a hold of Kyle, you can find him on Facebook at Ultra Custom Fab. There's a group and a fan page. You can go find him through there. Chassis like this start in that 450 range and they can go up from there depending on what options uh, you add or if you go with the regular PRT versus the HD. Kyle does phenomenal work. This is my first chassis from him and I couldn't be happier. Really looking forward to building this thing probably more trucks from him in my future. So with the intro complete on this build guys, watch for more videos to follow, try and get some up fairly soon, at least getting this truck to a roller before I really start going crazy with some of the details. But with that, we'll see you on the next one.